Hi, what's on the workbench today is a T55 hot plate from Secure. If you remember, I reviewed a soldering iron from them a few episodes ago, and I found that soldering iron pretty versatile and well made. Be sure to check out that review video. And as usual, I will leave a product link of the T55 in the video description below for those who are interested in getting one after watching this video. On this channel, I had reviewed a hot plate before, and that one is the MHP30 from Miniware, as you can see here. Of course, Miniware now has a larger version, the MHP50, which is almost the same size as the T55, but it costs more than twice as the T55 we have here. And the T55 is actually even larger than the MHP50 because its surface area is 55 by 55 millimeters versus 50 by 50 of the MHP50. Now, ignore the size difference. The first thing you'll notice is actually the T55 is surprisingly light for its size. It weighs only 92 grams compared to the 82 grams for the MHP30. Now, the T55 is of course much larger. The main reason is the building material. The MHP30 has aluminum case as you can see here, whereas the T55 has a plastic bottom here. Obviously, that also reduced the material cost. There are a couple of techniques used by the T55 to thermally insulate the bottom controller unit from the top hot plate. You can see we have this top plate, which is screwed in onto some standoffs along the edges. And these two pins right here are for the heater element as it measures around six ohms. And let me actually bring in a meter and show you. All right, let's do a quick measure. So these two pins are here. Let's see. And you can see it's right around 5.82. So that's the heating element. So I just did some calculation. In order to get a maximum rated 95 watts, you will need a 24 volt power supply. With a 20 volts USB PD power adapter, you are only going to get around 67 watts, give or take. Now, I'm pretty sure the connector on the side here, as you can see, this one, that is for you to plug in the power from a standard power supply. I think the product manual can be written a little bit better, as there's nowhere explaining what this connector is. Also, there's no indication of the polarity on the case, assuming this is indeed a power connector. Anyway, having an option to power it with a standard power source definitely is a welcome feature, especially if you need to push the power envelope beyond 67 watts. And you can see that the top plate is not directly connected with the bottom plate. There is some Kapton tape around the top plate assembly. Arguably, it's not as elegant as how it was done on the MHP30, but the cost is considerably less. Then there's another aluminum plate in the middle, as you can see here. Now, the middle plate is connected to the top one via these standoffs in the middle here, but they are connected to the bottom via these staggering standoffs on the side. You can see here, there are four standoffs on the corner here. By staggering these standoffs, more thermal isolation is achieved. Of course, we'll have to take a look at what the heat profile looks like when the hot plate is in operation. But I would assume the heat insulation is adequate, as otherwise the manufacturer would probably not have chosen to use this plastic base. Also in the middle, you can see we have two wires. Not sure how well it shows up. Maybe from the front side, you can see it. Well, let me use my pointer here. So you can see these are the two wires I'm mentioning here. Now, these two wires, I think, from the top plate are probably wires for some kind of temperature sensor. And finally, on the back, you can see we have two of these buttons, just like the MHP30. Let me just bring it here. You can see we also have these two buttons. Now, I don't know who is copying whose design, but how these two hot plates operate is very similar. The T55 has an adjustable temperature range between 50 degrees Celsius to 280 degrees Celsius, contracting to the 100 degrees Celsius to 350 degrees Celsius on the MHP30. For reflowing circuit board, either temperature range is plenty. Now, I do appreciate the fact that the T55 goes all the way down to 50 degrees, as I think it makes this hot plate more useful if you want to use it to just warm up some components. The supplied power adapter is actually a very nice one. You can see that it is a foldable type. The prongs fold in when you are carrying it and you can fold out to plug into the outlet. I really like this design as it makes it very portable. Of course, you could just use any USB PD power adapter at your disposal. If you buy the T55 without a power adapter, it's even cheaper. 
Oh, I forgot to show you. Here is the case the T55 came in with. It's a relatively generic box. You do have to scan the QR code to get to the user manual. Anyway. All right, time for us to power it on and take a look. Now, here is the supplied USB cable. This is actually a very interesting one. You can see the circuitry inside. I don't think I've ever seen this kind of before. Anyway, let's plug it in. Oh, it actually lights up. That's nice. And uh, let me actually zoom in a little bit so we can probably see it better. You can see that once powered on, the unit enters standby mode. The heater is currently stopped. We can turn it on, but right now I wanted to show you the manual first. The menu system is fairly to use, especially if you have used a similar hot plate before. You can get to this one pretty easily and pretty quickly. Unfortunately, because we only have these two buttons to work with, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. You won't need to juggle between short press, long press, and pressing both buttons at the same time to navigate around and change the settings. But luckily, you don't have to do much. As you can see here, the preset is pretty much going to be enough for you in typical use. But let's go over the menus first. Let's try to get into the menu. So you can see we can change the temperature. We can find other information. Let's go into temperature. I need a long press right hand side button. And you can see we have different temperatures to select from and different threshold unit and so on and so forth. So let's take a look at the OLED and I assume this one is for the brightness. Yep. And you can choose the language. So let's leave that alone. How about other? You can turn the buzzer on and there's a timer on the heater. Let's do about. And you can see the version we're currently at. All right. Let me power it on, and I do expect it will take some time to get up to temperature because of the large surface area. And now the temperature is set at 230 degrees. I think that should be sufficient for what we're doing here. And right now it's up to temperature, and I think it took roughly one minute and 45 seconds. So that is actually okay. Let's take a look at uh, the thermal profile here. And here you can see the thermal image captured by the thermal camera. And you can see the heating surface is relatively uniform actually. So that's good. Of course, the temperature captured on the thermal camera is different than what is shown here. And that's because we have this rather shiny surface. We have not changed the emissivity just yet, but you can see the uniformity of the temperature distribution. And also, as we mentioned earlier, you can see that the gradient of the temperature going down is fairly fast. In fact, the bottom is really cool as the heat is really just concentrated on the top plate. And even the middle plate is not that hot. So that design is pretty good. Now, of course, we'll power it on for a while and see how warm the bottom case gets. What I'm going to do next is put a circuit board on top and see if we can remove some of the components here. Now, this is a aluminum based circuit board and it's notorious to work with because of the heat dissipation. These are typically found in your LED lighting. This one specifically is from a failed unit. It measures around 60 millimeters by 20 millimeters. Now, it's just a little bit larger than the surface area here. So I'm going to put it on diagonally. And let's see. No, it's not totally flat. Okay, let's see how well it works. Let me actually increase the temperature a little bit. I don't think it's uh, working at this temperature. Let's do 250 and give it a try. The problem of this board is, you can see, it's not totally flat. So... I may need to press it down. Yep. Now you can see we are able to remove some of the components now. Let me turn on the temperature a little bit more. Let's do the maximum, 280 degrees. And now it's up to temperature again. 
can see some of the components already got desoldered. Some of the large components are still still need some work. Now let's take a look at the LEDs. Yep, these are already desoldered. Not a problem. You can see that. Very easy. So I guess you do have to put the temperature relatively high if you are working on a larger board like this. So let's see how long it takes for this larger component to be freed. I wonder if these are glued on actually. Um, I don't know. I don't think so, but uh, we'll have to take a look. You can see, eventually, now I do think this one probably is glued on, as it's a, it's not that big. So let's take a look here, yeah. Oh, because I think it has a center ground connection here, and that explains why it takes a while. Nevertheless, you can see we're able to remove all the components from this circuit board. And like I mentioned before, this kind of circuit board is very difficult to work with if you don't have a hot plate because of the high thermal mass. Now the hot plate has been on for a while, let's use a thermal camera to take another look. So let's see. And you can see that the bottom remains, is warm but is still manageable, and the top is still very uniform. So that is actually very good. Now the only downside is the bottom is pretty short. So if you're not careful, you're gonna be grabbing onto the top plate, which is not gonna be ideal. If you look at the miniware design, you will see that this is actually more ergonomic because this bottom section is taller. So you don't accidentally grab onto the hot plate itself. All right, now I wanted to try a different circuit board as that circuit board was not really flat. So let's try a different one. This is also an LED light, but this one actually will fit onto the surface here. So also I lowered the temperature to 250 degrees. And of course right now, just as I put it on, it started dropping. Of course, the temperature will be gradually brought back up as you can see. And we'll let it sit for a while and we'll see what the result is. Okay, now it seems that the whole board has been up to temperature. Let's see if we can remove some of the components here. Yep, this one came off, no problem. So you can see it's much easier if the surface is flat. And right now the temperature is at 250 degrees, as you can see here. We have no problem removing all these components. While we're at it, let's just remove everything here. You've got an idea here. What a treat. Okay, that's pretty much all I wanted to cover in this video. It's a hot plate and it worked quite well. More importantly, it's not expensive. If the manufacturer could update its manual and explain how to hook up a regular power supply, that would be icing on the cake. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please remember to give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more videos like this in the future. Your participation makes videos like this possible. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.